Hello YouTube and welcome to my first graphic design tutorial in quite some time and what we're going to be making in this tutorial is pretty simple it's just this button so while it's not anything too exciting it is a fairly nice looking button uh, that basically has a lot of purposes and a lot of uses and it's basically good to get back into the swing of making tutorials and uploading them and getting all of that stuff sorted out uh, so this buttons can be fairly customizable um, you can see I've already made quite a few buttons and all I need to do is toggle on and off the layers in order for you to see what some of them look like um, so you can make quite a quite a range of colors of buttons just by changing a few layers and a lot of people have expressed concern that I am moving to Photoshop instead of GIMP and that's quite understandable because I made this channel um, off of GIMP know-how. By the way, if you want to skip this spiel, I'll probably have a annotation that links you to the actual beginning of the tutorial. Um, but so what I'm going to do in kind of as a response to this is I'm going to make the tutorial on Photoshop and I'm also going to make the tutorial on GIMP uh, just for this time. So basically what that shows you is that like the two programs aren't that different after all and everything that I do on Photoshop can easily be followed on GIMP um, and I will rank that tutorial uh, to show you that the programs aren't that dissimilar. Um, yeah, basically that's what's going on. So with that said, let's go ahead and get into the tutorial. So you can just open up a new image. The canvas size really doesn't matter, but uh, basically just make it the size you'd like. So I'm going to take the rounded rectangle tool and I'm just going to make a rounded rectangle as the rounded rectangle tool would suggest. And the radius is actually set on 15 pixels for this in particular. Then I'm going to right click and then click make selection and click OK. And this is just because I don't really like working with vectors masks. I'm not incredibly comfortable with them. And then I'm just going to stroke down the color of my button. So in this case, I think I'm going to be making a green button. So I'm just going to choose a nice green color and then the other green color for the gradient. And I think that's about good. Then I'm going to go ahead and make a gradient and just stroke down like this. Now I think my button's a little too thick at the moment, so I'm just going to scale it down just a little bit. Alright, so once that's done, we have a fairly good base for a button. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to right click and then click Select Pixels, make a new layer, then I'm going to take the Square Selection tool, and making sure my selection mode is on Bisect, I'm going to go ahead and select an area across this button, then take the Gradient tool, set the color to white, the foreground color to white, that is, and then I'm going to set the gradient color on FG to transparent, which takes your foreground color to transparent. And then take your gradient and stroke upwards so you're left with this sort of effect on the button. Now that's a little too glaring and it's not near as subtle as I want, so I'm going to go ahead and set the layer mode to overlay, and then I'm going to reduce the opacity of that layer just a little bit. So now I'm going to go ahead and duplicate the base button layer, except on this layer I'm going to right click and then click select pixels, and then I'm going to head, I'm going to go ahead and select a lighter green color. So what this is going to do is I'm actually going to drag this uh, box up. So as you can see, um, it's going to create like a nice borderline type thing for us. And that will definitely come in importance later. So I'm going to right click on this again and then click select pixels so I can select the box again. I'm going to make a new layer and then I'm going to take the gradient tool again and make sure I have the gradient set on radial. Then I'm going to choose the white gradient again and go FG to transparent except the only difference now is that we're set on radial. And then I'm going to go ahead and stroke a radial gradient down about like this. Then we can go ahead and click select, deselect. Now with the move tool I'm going to just go ahead and uh, squeeze it a little bit and then that's going to or uh, contract it a little bit I guess you'd say and then I'm going to go ahead and put that on top of the button as if we're providing a light source so then I'm going to set that layer mode as well on overlay so we're still missing a few details on this button here um, it's not quite as dark as I'd like it to be at the bottom so we're going to select pixels again and we're gonna make a new layer on top of that and then we're going to go ahead and choose a, a normal FG to transparent, not radial anymore, with black as the main FG color. And we're going to go ahead and stroke up. Then we're also going to reduce the opacity of this. And this just gives the button a little more depth. Now let's go ahead and keep the selection and make another layer on top of that and set the gradient back to radial. What I'm going to do is in the corners of this button, I'm going to go ahead and stroke a radial gradient on each side. So as you can see here, this kind of gives us like a dark effect on each side. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to tone the opacity down greatly on these as well. 
So we're getting a pretty good base for a button, but the button isn't quite complete yet. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm actually going to make a new layer. I'm going to fill this layer entirely with black. So I'm just going to use the gradient tool and stroke over from this edge. And if you stroke over, that'll uh, cover the entire image in black. Then I'm going to go filters, render, or whoops, yeah, lens flare. So now I'm going to actually move the lens flare into the center of the image, and that's so we don't get any of these artifacts right here, because um, basically all we want the lens flare, floor, lens flare for is the light source. So once we have that, we're going to go ahead and set the layer mode on color dodge. Now we're going to take the uh, movement tool, essentially, and we're just going to scrunch this uh, lens flare up. And then we're going to go image adjustments desaturate. So basically what this does is this gives us a nice glowy top for our button. And I'm going to go ahead and grab the eraser tool and erase any sides um, in which basically I'm going to erase any parts of the lens flares, lens flare that are outside the button. Um, now I'm going to duplicate this lens flare again and I'm going to move it down to the bottom of the button. And so what this is going to do is just give us a nice little shine off the bottom of our button uh, that will look very nice indeed. So now I'm going to make a new layer on top of all of that yet, and I'm going to use the font. Now the font I'm using is called Blade Runner, and I think I will have the uh, download for Blade Runner in the description. And so I'm going to go ahead and select Blade Runner, then I'm just going to go ahead and type in the word button. Now this font is a little small for us yet, so we'll go ahead and beef the size up to, oh, 140. Oh, only spelled it with one T. And 140 is a little big yet, so we'll go ahead and go, oh, let's go straight to 110. And got to make sure you don't have the N there that big too. Okay, so now that we have the button text set at 110, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to do a little, uh, little kind of drop shadow effect inside the text. So I'm going to double click on the button layer to bring up the layer styles panel. Then I'm going to click Color Overlay. Now on this Color Overlay, I'm going to go ahead and select a fairly dark color for the Color Overlay, but keep in mind it can't be black. Then I'm going to select the inner shadow portion of the uh, layer styles, and we're just going to create an inner shadow. Um, so you can go ahead and leave the multiply and the angle. You can leave all of that at the default settings. Then we're going to maybe increase the distance to about 13, and just increase the size. So the goal here, I'm actually going to turn the distance on, the goal here is to make a visible inner shadow, but to also make it subtle. Now we're not quite done yet. I'm going to go to the outer glow tab yet, and then I'm just going to increase the size a little bit. So what this is basically going to do is it's going to add like another layer of illusion, so to speak, of that the text is actually like sunk into the button. But this is a little strong at the moment, so I'm going to go ahead and lower the opacity some. And this is just going to create a fairly subtle, uh, fairly nice looking uh, illusion. And uh, that, let's compare it to the example, uh, that's a pretty good looking button so far. I think what needs to happen is we need to have an inner shadow on the button. So I'm going to go back down to the main button layer, and I'm going to double click, and then we're going to add an inner shadow. Now this inner shadow, I'm going to tone the distance all the way down to zero, and then I'm going to tone the size up. So basically what this accomplishes is that it means we have an even inner shadow from all sides without it focusing on one distance. Um, and this is useful if you want to make pillow shading, uh, which ordinarily isn't that great, but I think for this uh, example works splendidly. So uh, that's an example of how to create a pretty cool button. Uh, we got pretty close to the results I got um, in the original image. The only thing is that I had... Uh, I had made my original button a little darker. So to fix that, we can just go color overlay. Um, that is on the layer styles panel, which you bring up by double clicking the layer, by the way. And I can just go ahead and darken up the color to whichever color looks the best. So uh, this is a, another example of how easy it is to change the color of the button. So if you ever want to change it, all you need to do is change your color overlay color. So if we wanted, say, a uh, magenta button or like a purple button, we could do that. But then you also, of course, have to be careful about uh, changing the color on your highlight sh um, shape that you had made as well. So uh, that's just a fairly simple guide on how to make a good looking button. Um, it's fairly simple, nothing too extraordinary. However, it's a pretty good looking button and I believe it suits its purposes. So I am GIMP know-how, and I will be back with another GIMP version of this tutorial in the coming days. And hopefully I will come out with some 
more interesting tutorials uh, at a later date. But until then, I'm Gimp Know How. Thanks for watching.